Hello everyone and welcome to episode 61. Yeah, what can I say? Those modders are relentless. They keep bombarding me with quality stuff I can't even think of not reviewing. I really wish I had more time to do different kinds of videos too. But unfortunately it's completely the other way around. I will probably do some vlogs soon to discuss the issues at hand. But again, if I find the time, because right now I'm in the reds. And now let's see some of those quality mods. Do you like experiments? Because this totally looks like one. Your own Skyrim Decision Tree Player Classifier by Henrique Moises Fernandez. This mod is a system which records and analyzes all your actions and then based on how you play assigns a player type and class to you. The game will then automatically dynamically generate skill-based quests which fit to your playstyle. So much for the theory behind it and here's how it actually works. There are only 4 types and 3 classes right now and as you can see here I have been classified as an explorer and blacksmith. And soon after a courier found me and gave me a letter from a guy who noticed my talents and wants to speak with me. This blacksmith guy in Whiterun. Who then gave me a smithing related mini quest, some material gathering, nothing special. And as a reward I received a new weapon. So in other words, since I was put into the blacksmith class, the game generated this blacksmith quest to help me advance this skill. So yeah, this mod sure follows an interesting concept, that's for sure. But its practical usefulness is a bit questionable, at least the way it is right now. This mod is actually part of the author's master thesis project. And yeah, while it makes sense to use Skyrim for something like this, because you can theoretically construct almost everything given the mod ability and considering the name Creation Kit, but I can also totally imagine profs bursting out in laughter as one proudly announces how I based my master thesis on a video game. It just depends on how open-minded people are, really. So I would really love to see how this works out. Is immersion still considered lit in 2018? Because next we shall check a little immersion mod. Basket Backpack but Higiyosi. This mod adds 6 highly immersive wearable baskets with different stuff inside. They also increase carry weight by 30 points. Some of the farmers will immersively wear them, you know, to increase immersion and make your game more immersive. But seriously now, I like it. Small, simple mods like this one do make a difference. Adding it to my mod list. Ok, so I decided to add a follower to this episode. It's been a while since we had any, so welcome Mary, a redhead follower by Teen Age. She can be found in the Temple of the Divines in Solitude. Yes, yes, a good looking redhead with green eyes and freckles. This sure does go well together, a very nice composition. I'm feeling like I'm reviewing a painting here. Anyway, she comes with this bikini, which used to be blades armor at some point, by the looks of it, and no weapon. So I guess fighting is not her strength, if you catch my drift. But uh, you know what? I will put her to good use by putting her on the thumbnail. <laughs> Alright people, grab your Witcher gear and get ready. It looks like we have a new contract. Draco Lizards, a new monster mod by Mihail. This mod adds several wyvern-like, winged, fire-breathing, oversized lizards. Well yes, of course those are actually Slizards and Forktails from Witcher 3. They sure do look good in Skyrim too. They are not as big as Skyrimese dragons obviously and also can't fly. So how do you think they are rigged then? Like, which skeleton do they use? Can fly, so obviously not dragon. Something like werewolf maybe? Nope, wrong. Guess what? It's surprisingly the skeever one. This is also how they are able to do this lunging attack. It fits them perfectly. Really smart. And next we have a real badass coming up. Ice Golem. Holy shit, another boss looking golem mod. This thing looks brutal. Like the love child of an ice atronarch and a death claw, with a tree on its back. Was it supposed to disguise itself as a tree? You know, like mud crabs pretend to be rocks? Because it didn't do it in my game. 
So obviously, thinking of death was, I expected this thing to be brutal and absolutely kick ass. But somehow he actually went down really fast. I guess he was all snow after all. But the next one is really 100% boss, I promise. War Revenants. More badass looking creatures from Witcher 3. Wrong. It's actually from Witcher 2 this time. Alright, so here we have some dangerously looking walking battlefield parts. They are like several corpses and gear items fused into one creature. This is also why they are called Legions and Wrath Knights. Also, let's take a look on this situation I walked in here. We have lots of those skeleton shades, several Wrath Knights, a towering legion, and let's not forget the two necromancers in the back. Yeah, this right here, this is definitely what I call a hard fight. Look at this. Just just look at all this shit going on here. Notice the clearly visible frame drop. Also, I'm proud to report that my game didn't crash from all this. But yeah, if you manage to survive this madness somehow, you get some spoils of war. Two great swords and two shields. After all this action, some peaceful scenery should be good. Indricotherium and giraffes. Lots of new creatures in this one. This mod adds a total of 15 different peaceful herbivore animals. I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite Mihal mods so far. At least in terms of new wildlife mods and not counting those fantasy creatures. I was really overwhelmed when I saw those huge ones from this mod. It really takes your breath away standing next to them and just realizing how huge they are. So at this point I would like to officially thank Mihail for all the mods. There have been really a lot in the last two years or so, and a big part of my reviews consists of those mods. So once again, big thank, man. Okay then, it's time to check how things are going in the R&D department. I mean weapons and armors. Ashen Nordic Sword by Funky Gandalf Cats. Another weapon from Dark Souls 2. Nice blade, totally fits into Skyrim. I could absolutely imagine finding something like this on a Draugr somewhere. Also we have this classic upgrade system here again, with plus one, plus two and so on. And this is it, only one weapon mod this time. So let's do the armors right away. Ed Hildil's Bug Armor by Ed Hildil. Oh damn, I, th I think this one is a little buggy. Okay, I I'm sorry. Killing those turtle things is not enough. We shall make armor out of them now too. Monster Hunter style. And there is one which actually looks like armor. Here we go. Well protected. Unless someone decides to stab you in the, um, uh, you know, heart area. Next, it's time to display our glorious gains again. Perps Scoundrels Armor Remastered by Reform Madness. Ah, what is this? Where are my gains? All gone? No! Yeah, looks like there is no white slayer support on this one. Other than that, it's really good. There are lots of color options to choose from, and it's also highly customizable. Every part can be equipped separately, and there are also lots of accessory parts on this one. And next we shall take a look at a new player home. Haven't had those for a while now too. A Ho Dwemer Ship by Hame Projects. Yes, I'm going to keep calling it A Ho. Project A Ho is damn awesome, there is absolutely no debate. And here we get a fitting standalone player home. First you need to find a control cube at Deep Fork Crossing, and then you will be able to summon the player home in different parts of Skyrim using those control ports. And oh my god. Just look at what's happening here. Such animation, much special effects, big sphere, wow. But yes, it's same projects, we aren't even allowed to be surprised anymore. And on the inside, the awesomeness continues of course. Very technological, lots of glowy parts. I like glowy parts. Do you like glowy parts? I think everybody does. So as mentioned before, the sphere can be summoned in different places. You can change the locations from the inside too of course. 
And another feature here is the ability to change the lights in different colors and the different parts of the sphere. Did I already mention the glowy parts? So many glowy parts. There are also some portals to move around. Portals are cool too, right? Without question. Other than that, there is all the usual stuff you would expect to find in a player home. Crafting stations, mannequins, of course everything with immersively looking animated Dwemer technology objects. What I really like about this player home is that they managed to grasp the alive Dwemer technology theme. In the vanilla game, the Dwemer places we discover are always dead and in ruins. With this mod, we get to experience what it was like during the time the drama were on the peak of their existence. So, needless to say, this is an awesome home mod. But there is still more. Another player home mod with some nice extras. Castle Albana by Fly Dawn. The special thing about this one is, you will have to complete a little unmarked but totally scripted quest, with the usual courier start. You will then have to follow some notes and clues until you finally find the player home itself. It's not really a castle, more like an underground vampire lair. And inside we find an interesting surprise. Master, is that you? I have been waiting so long for your return. A custom voiced NPC. And if you do things right, also a potential follower. This Jared. He is the cause of all of this. Where is this Jared? Where is he? Yeah, she seems to have some issues, but what do you expect? She's a vampire after all. So, if you roleplay a good guy character, you can send her to the Cloud District right away. As for the actual home, yes, it does look like a castle on the inside, and is best suited for a vampire, of course. But the actual highlight here is obviously the quest and the potential custom voice follower. And this is it for this episode. Links to all mods are as always in the description below. Don't forget to endorse the mods you like. And if you enjoyed this review, hit the like button and subscribe for more. If you want to help me out, share my videos on other sites or support me on Patreon. I thank you all for watching and see you soon with more awesome mods.